Alright ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this next episode today of the Mihi Research Institute. Now we'll be moving on to phase two of the fur trade. Um, we've already done phase one, you if you have missed that you can always rewatch it's only uh, three minutes or so from the playlist which this video should soon be added to. So, in this part of the fur trade, the French mostly dominated it. The, um, the French were, well, their forts were based along the St. Lawrence River and therefore it was quite easy to get to. Um, so, the interesting thing is that the Haudenosaunee, who we would think from before had learned and thought of peace as an option, were actually enemies of the French. Now, there was a, there was a particular reason, which would be a reason I would understand. Um, they were given the name Iroquois by the French, actually. But the French partnered with the Haudenosaunee's enemies. And um, they also wanted the Haudenosaunee to convert to Catholicism. Now please note that this is based on the Owl Canada textbook for grade 7, so thank you to them. Um, now, a lot of French and First Nation interaction reacted in some intercultural marriages. This was known as Métis, uh, also a French word. So the children of them were known as Métis children, they were half European half First Nation. Um, now we're going to talk about the uh, the needs and the wants in this fur trade. It was definitely something that influenced them a lot. There was needs such as food, shelter and transportation. Of course that's something that, that was traded for a lot, especially from the natives. They, they would be training with them. But then there was things like tobacco, pots, pans, money, guns, and then those things are wants. So th it was interesting because imagine the difference of how much, how would you trade differently? How would you react differently if you needed a need and not a want? So it changed how they traded and how vigorously they did, of course. So those partners that the French partnered with were the Wendat, the Mi'kmaq, the Innu, and the Kichisperini. So unfortunately the French and the Haudenosaunee had a war which ended in a French win, of course, in 1701. So this is very unfortunate. Um, now lots of animals were of course dying here, because there's more things than just Beavers is bison to feed the people, bison to build these things, bison to do all this, all these other things. And um, it seems as though the wind out with the middlemen, meaning that they were the ones that would take it to the French. So it was a making, it was a big interesting economic uh, collaboration there. Now ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions or need a homework help, feel free to visit our Google Plus page or email us at mehu, that's M-E-H-O-O -O stuff, at gmail.com. That's all for us today at the Media Research Institute. Stay tuned for Phase 3.